What if I told you every single one of these images had a secret? The secret is none of these are real. That's right, every single one of these images was generated using artificial intelligence, specifically with stable diffusion. Today I'm going to show you how you can build your own AI model, you can train it using stable diffusion, and then you can use it to generate an unlimited number of images just like this. Let's jump right into it. All right, we're not going to mess around because I know you're excited to get started testing this out. What we're going to use is something from Google called Dream Booth. I'm going to drop a link to this down in the description below because it's a long URL. So just go ahead and grab that and get started. The first thing we're going to do when we come here is we're going to click this run button. It's going to let you know that this notebook was not authored by Google. It was authored by a third party. Go ahead and click run anyway. This is gonna check the GPU and VRAM. This is basically connecting to Google Cloud and setting up one of their NVIDIA Tesla GPUs to train the model with. Again, this is free, so just go ahead and get this going. And as soon as that's done, you're gonna kinda of just follow this from top to bottom. So you're gonna go here and install the requirements. It's gonna install Python and everything else that you need in order to build this stable diffusion model. This is gonna take just a couple minutes. And for the next step, we're gonna log into a place called Hugging Face. Hugging Face is a community that has a bunch of information and models about artificial intelligence. So what we wanna do is we're gonna click this link to the model card. That'll open up this page. Now, the first time you come here, there is gonna be a checkbox somewhere on the page for you to accept their terms. Go ahead and click that. You also need to sign up for, a, again, a free account. You can use your Google address, your Google email address to just connect via OAuth. And once you've done both of those things, you're going to need an access token. So if you go up to the upper right hand corner, you can click this and you can go to settings. Once you're in settings, you're going to see this section for access tokens. Click on that. And then you're gonna, the first time you come in here, you're gonna click generate new token. So just click new token, and then it's gonna provide this access token. You can go over here and click on the copy token to clipboard. We're gonna need that for the next step. This is just gonna give API access over to Hugging Face so that Dream Booth is able to pull some data from their system to train your model. So now we're gonna go here and just where it says Hugging Face token, we're gonna right click and paste in our Hugging Face token. By now, the above step should be done. It takes about a minute. We're gonna go ahead and click play on this run cell. Now for this next section is settings and run. This allows you to save the model directly to your Google Drive, which is super handy, especially if you wanna use this in a local development version of Stable Diffusion on your own computer later, which I'm gonna show you in another video. So go ahead and the only thing you need to do here is go ahead and delete this ZWX directory, click save to G Drive, and then click the run cell again. Now this is gonna prompt you to connect to your Google Drive. And you need to be aware that this is gonna take several gigabytes in order to store this. So as it says at the top, it's around four to five gigabytes. There's an additional two gigabytes depending on the options that you select later. So what you're gonna do is go ahead and give it access to your Google Drive. It's gonna pop up in a window and you simply need to log in with your Gmail account and then click allow. This is gonna set up the directories on your Google Drive. It takes just a minute. All right, and with that done, we can go ahead and scroll down to the next section. So this is where it gets really important. So you can see this section is where we're actually gonna set up the prompt that we're gonna use. This is, you can think about this when you're typing out a text prompt for artificial intelligence. If you use ChatGPT or you've used any other stable diffusion, you know that you use a prompt. So you say something like, I want a photo of Tom Cruise riding a unicorn, whatever it might be. So this is where we're gonna set up the prompt that it's gonna answer back with data about you and your training model. You don't want this to be generic. You don't wanna say photo of Brian, for example. You wanna say something more explicit that is not common. So you can use a nickname if you got one, just use something that's not very common. So I'm gonna go with be love. That's kind of what some people call me. So it goes be love person. I know grammatically that's kind of a weird way to put it, but you want to say photo of be loved person. And then for the class prompt, kind of a similar thing. You want to say dot photo of a dog, unless you're training this model on dog photos. In this case, it's on me. So I'm going to say person. So photo of a person, photo of be loved person. That's perfect. So again, for this, we're going to change the directory. So we're going to go be loved model, all one word. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to say person. 
instead of dog. And that's it. That's all we need to do there. So we're going to go ahead and click play. This is going to set up the directory structure that it needs for us to import the training data, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. So once that's done, it takes about a second. The next portion is where you upload your images. Now you can upload your images right here, right? You can press run cell and it'll prompt you to upload the images. We don't want to do that. So instead of choosing the file here and uploading them one at a time, we're going to do kind of a batch upload. So we're going to go over to files. We're going to go to data and you can see BLove model is a directory in here. Okay. This is where we want to upload all of our training data. This is a really important step. So I want to pause here for a second. The quality of the training data that you provide to this model and the variety of the data that you provide is going to impact directly the output that you get. The better your training data, the more varied the training data, the better this system is going to perform when you actually ask it to produce an image for you. So here's what I did that I found successful. I went through my Google Drive, I went through my iCloud photos, and I found probably 40 or 50 images of me. What you want to do is you want to get images that are in different lighting conditions. You want to get some selfies if you can, some close-ups, some far away. What I've found, typically speaking, is that from shoulder up, if you get shoulder up photos and you get close up photos, you're going to be able to generate very highly detailed images after the fact. So you can see a lot of these are varied. Some of these have pictures of other people in them. Now what I did here is I cropped every single one of these images down to 512 by 512. That's really important because that's the ratio, that's the aspect ratio and size that the training model is actually expecting. So you can see that we ended up with, let's see, 30 items. And I think that's a fair amount. Now, the more data you have up to a point, the better the model is going to come out. But in this case, 20 to 30 images seems to be enough. I also trained a model on my wife and we got great results out of about 20, 30 images. So what you're going to do, once you have all that training data set up, you've got all of your images, you can go ahead and select all of the images in the folder and you can just drag and drop them in the BeLove model folder. Now it's going to prompt you that you need to have these saved somewhere else, but of course you already have these on your computer. You can see that's going to take just a second to upload all of those, depending on your internet speed. Once all of your photos are uploaded, you can go ahead and scroll down to the next step. This is where you're actually going to train the model. And there are a couple of things we want to change in here. So you can see resolution is 512. That's perfect. What we need to do is go down to max training steps. Now, this is the number of sort of iterations that the, the model makes on every single one of the images that you upload. The more iterations it takes, the more training data it has, the better the results are to a point. Sometimes it can get weird if you put too high a number in here. We have 30 images and what I've found is that for every 10 images, about a thousand steps seems to be kind of the sweet spot. So in our case, we're going to put max train steps at 3000. We're also going to set the save interval. So how often it saves to 3000 steps, same thing. And then we're going to change the sample prompt to the same thing we specified earlier. So be love person. And then we're going to hit run cell. This is the most intensive part. This is going to take probably 30 to 40 minutes, depending on the number of images that you've uploaded. You can see in the background, this is using TensorFlow. This is what's actually training the model. So that's going to go ahead and do its thing. You can take a break here. You can go grab some coffee, come back in about a half hour. I would come back every few minutes and just kind of scroll the page a little bit, maybe uh, shrink and open a dialog box, something like that, just to show that there's some activity on the site. Because here's what happens. If you let this page run and you leave it for, say, an hour, when you come back to it, it's going to have already timed out. It's going to be done and you're going to have to start this entire process all over. So you can go away while this is happening, but don't go too far. You might just, you might just watch some of my other YouTube videos while you're waiting something to pass the time. All right. You might've had time for a couple cups of coffee there. Cause that took about 45 minutes, but we have completed it. Hopefully yours did the same. The next thing we're going to do is go down here and press play on the next run cell, specify the weights directory. We're going to leave that to the default. We're not going to fill anything in there. And that takes just one second to run. Here is the moment of truth. So we're going to run this cell and it's going to actually generate some images based on our training data. And these might not look exactly perfect, but they're going to give you a representation of the model. They're going to be a little off, but you can tweak that later with your prompt. Let's hit the run and see what it comes back with. 
Not bad. First one's a little bit weird there, but you know, that's how it goes. These look directionally okay. The second and third one, you can at least tell it's me. And so I think we're at least headed in the right direction with this model. So the next part that we're going to do is convert weights to CKHPT. This is a checkpoint file. This is what we're going to use later on in the next video to actually run this locally on your own machine. So this is what's going to actually download the model that you can use in Stable Diffusion. So we're going to go ahead and run the conversion, leave everything checked as is, and that's going to save this to your Google Drive. It's going to take another two gigabytes of storage, so make sure you have plenty of room for that. And it takes just a minute for this to run. We're going to come down here and run the next cell. This is going to import iTorch and everything else. It's needed to actually generate some images. So we're going to go ahead and set that up. While that's going, we can go ahead and figure out some other stuff here. So the next section under this is set a random seed for reproducibility. So the way that this works is it uses a random number as a seed for the stable diffusion model to actually generate some images. If you use the same seed number or code, what it happens is that it actually generates very similar images, sometimes the same images. It's a way for reproducibility. So what we can do is we can set this to negative one. That's going to use a random seed every single time this runs. Now, once this is done actually importing, we're going to go ahead and run this, and then we're going to set up our first prompt. We can go ahead and write this out while we're waiting. Let me scroll up here. You can see it says photo of ZWX dog in a bucket. Now, this is the prompt that is the default for this model. But remember, we changed ours. So it should be beloved person. Whatever you named yours, you use as a replacement. So photo of beloved person. It looks like our import finished. So we can set our random seed. So we'll run that. It takes less than a second. You can also do a negative prompt. So you could say things like, you know, you don't want to be shirtless. Uh, you don't want weird hands. You can add a whole bunch of negative things there. This is basically a filter that's going to filter out some of the weird results you get. Number samples, four. This is just the number of images that it's going to produce. Guidance scale. The lower this number is, the more it adheres to your prompt. So the more it's going to be like a photo of beloved person, the higher the number is, the more it's going to have sort of creative influence over what happened. Number of inference steps. This is the number of times that the image is actually iterated over in the artificial neural network. The higher this number, the more iterations it does, but you're not necessarily going to get better results. I find that a number between, let's say 20 and 65-ish is typically sufficient for most of the models that have trained. And then height 512 by 512, we're gonna leave that. Otherwise, it takes a really long time to train some of these. So we're gonna go ahead and run this. All right, let's see what we got back. Uh, that one's not too bad. The face is a little bit odd, not quite photorealistic, but something sometimes it, so you'll notice with farther away when it has like a full body image like this, you'll get really weird facial details. I'll show you some tips and tricks later to actually correct that in another video. Uh, this one, again, you can see some facial abnormalities, but it's directionally okay. So what we want to use this for is, okay, this directionally looks all right. Like the training succeeded and everything came out okay. From here, the big thing is going to be learning how to write the prompts, both the positive prompt that shows the result and the negative prompt, the things to filter out. I'm going to do an entire series of videos on that. So hit like and subscribe if you found this useful and you'd like me to continue making content like this. That just gives me a good indication that this was worthwhile. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or you had any difficulties up to this point. And we're going to follow up with a whole series of videos about how you can use this to run local models on your own computer and how you can get better results out of the data. Hope you found this useful. Thank you all so much. This is all your tech. I'm Brian Lovett. We'll see you next time. Thank you.